Hello beautiful souls and welcome to Cosmic Consciousness with Cassia. On this channel we discuss all aspects of the ascension process. I have a variety of services that I offer to assist in your awakening journey and you can find those listed in the description box below. Today I thought we'd do a video just reading into the closing energies of 2021. We are in that final stretch right now of this muggle year. Couple months left here, to about two and a half months and a lot of really powerful and potent energies that we're going to be experiencing. I'm really feeling this energy building and a lot of dynamic shifts and changes as we move through the end of the year and quite literally get catapulted into 2022. 2022 is going to be a very powerful year as we have a lot of focus on the energies of that Taurus and Scorpio axis, which is what I like to call the axis of enlightenment. And so we're going to get into all of that in another video. But just know that it's a lot of powerful, potent energy as we really master the art of being, as we master our physical reality, as we really come into a deeper relationships with our bodies, with our physical world, and with our shadow as well, and really uh, hone in on that practice of examining those aspects of our shadow and bringing them into light, integrating them with the fullness of our being. So we're standing in more of the fullness of our power. But right now we're talking about 2021, and we know that the energies of 2021 have primarily focused around this energy of the mastery of the mind. We've seen this in a variety of different aspects. We've seen all of the Mercury retrogrades of 2021 in air signs, really balancing and harmonizing that mental system. And check out those Mercury retrograde videos if you guys want more information on that because we covered that in those videos those are all in the astrological ascension energies playlists uh, we also had the nodes with that north node in gemini that south node in sagittarius and multiple eclipses along that gemini sagittarius axis we are going to be finishing out 2021 with that final eclipse in sagittarius uh in december and we have an eclipse in Taurus coming up in November, which is connected to the eclipse in Scorpio that we had at the beginning of the year and is connected into all the eclipses of 2022, each and every single one of which will be in either the sign of Scorpio or Taurus. So those are heavy energies, especially with the nodes moving into Taurus and Scorpio that we're going to be experiencing through 2022. So we're getting a taste of that another taste of that, we should say, in November. And then we're getting that final culmination of those Gemini Sagittarius eclipses in December. And all of this energy along the Gemini Sagittarius axis has been about belief systems, has been about us having those belief systems that are no longer working for us coming into our minds so that we can release them, right? It's been about deprogramming, debugging the mind, taking ownership over our mind, mastery over our mind and our mental processes, which is so important, right? Because true freedom, if we're not free here, we can't be free anywhere. Right. This is why there's such a move to control our perspective, to control the information around us, to control our beliefs, because those are creating our perceptions and creating our realities. So when we take that control back, we take back that ability to really create and cultivate our reality, as well as our ability to see and recognize truth more deeply. So it's been a powerful, powerful process that is really culminating over these next two months. Um, with and, and really completing and cementing in with that eclipse in Sagittarius. And there will be videos on these different separate things as well. As we move forward, this is just these are just some of the energies that we want to talk about as we're talking about the end of 2021. We had Pluto turn direct this month in October. We also had Saturn and Jupiter turning direct. So big, big energies that we experienced this month. We have that 1010 portal. That was big energy. If you guys haven't checked out that video, check it out in that video. I also link a video that I did with Pete from Empath Uprising on the 1010 portal as well. Lots of really good information in those two videos. Now we're moving into that 1111 portal, that 1212 portal, which I am feeling as huge, the, both the 1111 and the 1212 feel like really huge portals this year. Uh, they always get super intense at the end of the year, right? Um, and there will be videos on those separately, but it's all of these huge conglomerations of energy, right? This huge pot that's really uh, just, um, it's being stirred. 
right? That pot is being stirred. All the ingredients are coming together and we're moving into 2022 incredibly empowered, incredibly focused and centered on our purpose and where it is that we're moving from here. Much more connected with our souls, with our higher selves, uh, with each other, right? And with, like we said, that life path. So we're going to get right into it. And I think I'm going to start here with the star seed oracle. I feel like there are some messages that want to come out for us from the star seed oracle regarding this ending the end of 2021 here. Clear. What guidance do we have from our beautiful brethren in the skies, right? From our home planets. What guidance do we have from all of the beautiful star beings? As we move through these last couple months of 2021, what's going on here? What can we expect? What do we need to know? What guidance? All right. All right. We have Harayath longing for home, homesick for the stars coming out. We also have surrender to the sweetness, Venus energy, pleasure, joy, make love to life. And so these two cards together, very clear and very strong message here. Really, uh, we're being asked to enjoy being present here, right? To not spend too much time wishing that we were somewhere else. And that includes the new earth. Yes, we want to visualize, right? We want to daydream. We are creating the new earth with our daydreams and visions. That channeling came through in that 1010 portal video, right? That we are creating that as we speak. However, we don't want to get so caught up in, in waiting for that that we forget to be present right here, right now. We want to experience the gift of being here right now, being in this transition phase, which is the most powerful phase. Like what we're doing right now is so incredibly powerful. It's so incredibly important and potent. And this is what we're going to remember for the rest of our, our, our eternal lives, right? Is that we were here right now. It is so powerful. So we're being asked to try not to be too homesick, to know that we're never actually not anywhere, right? We are multidimensional beings, but our consciousness is focused here right now for a reason. And there is so much sweetness. There is so much joy. There is so much pleasure that we can get out of this earthly incarnation right now. So really sink into it. Really enjoy it. Really um, savor the gift of being present in this incredibly uh, powerful, powerful time in history and enjoy. It says make love to life. All right. So really, uh, be, become fully incarnated. Let your focus be right here, right now. That is a huge, huge message uh, coming through for us. Then we have baby steps coming out. Action. Follow your intuition before it makes sense. So this is all about taking those steps that we're guided to take. As we move through this end of 2021, we are going to be receiving guidance, right? Our intuition, our higher selves, our spiritual teams talking to us even more loudly and consistently than before, guiding us in the direction that is going to lead us to where it is that we're meant to travel next in this earthly experience, all right? So follow that intuition. Bef Remember, it says before it makes sense. We don't need to know. We don't need to understand everything, right? This is where uh, we come into this energy, this energy of knowing, this energy of um, moving beyond sort of the, the prison that the logical mind can be when we allow it to dictate all of our decisions. It's meant to be utilized by us to put things into action, Right, But our logical mind is not meant to make all our decisions. We have to learn how to be guided by our intuition, guided by our higher selves. And we may not understand why we're feeling guided to do something, but if you are feeling guided to do something, you know without a doubt, right, until the logical mind kicks in and you let it run rampant, right? But before that process begins, you know you feel without a doubt that you're being guided to do something, do it. Trust it. Don't try to figure out why, right? The why will reveal itself in time. All right, so that. And just knowing that every step that we take is important. That's what this card also represents. That's what I'm feeling from it right now. Every little step that you take is important. So don't think that what you consider to be the baby steps, the small steps are insignificant. It is all significant. Every little thing that you do, every little action, every little kindness, every little word, every little step that you take 
towards your dreams and desires is important, right? And so don't minimize anything that you're doing and don't don't wait around thinking that it has to be some big, dramatic, grand um, event or thing that you need to do, right? If you're, do the little things in the meantime and know that those little things add up to big things. They're much bigger than you realize. Every little thing that you do. Then we have water your garden and forage don't follow. So this is all about taking care, nourishing our bodies, taking care of our minds, our bodies, and our spirits, getting the appropriate rest that we need. These energies are amping up, but we still need to find that time to get quiet. We still need to find that time to care for ourselves, to nurture ourselves, right? It can't just be go, go, go all the time. We have to punctuate that with rest. We have to pay attention to our bodies when they are requiring that rest, what they are needing from us. We Water your garden is the same, is a different way of saying fill your cup. So keep your cup full as you are moving forward. And this is that energy, be the leader you wish you had. We talked about that with the 1010 portal, this energy of us all being initiated as leaders in our own lives, really seeing and viewing ourselves as leaders. All right, so this is all about Paving that new path, creating that new reality, creating that new, um, what's the word that I'm looking for here? Template, those new templates for reality. That's what we're doing here. We were not put here to follow in the footsteps of others. We were put here to blaze a new path. So know that and trust in your ability to do that. Trust in where you're being guided, what the path is that you're being led to walk. Like we said, even if you don't understand it. So incredibly important. Um, what else do we want to do right now? I want to get some Black Moon Astrology cards out. I've been called to those today as well. Uh, there, all right, there may be one more message wanting to come through from the star seed. Is there one more message that you guys want to give us before we move on to a different deck? Breath of the cosmos, my will to thy will, micromanaging the universe. And so this is where our will is transforming in and merging with divine will, right? And so we want to be careful. We want to understand what the difference is between our human will, which is that, that aspect of our, of our human ego identity that seeks to control, that seeks to understand, that seeks to know, right? Because it needs that security, because it doesn't feel safe, it doesn't feel confident, <clears throat> So where are, is it that we can relax this need to micromanage all the details of the universe and just surrender and trust and allow that process of the merging of our will with the divine will, right? Allowing that, that to take root. It's really interesting because it looks to me like she's, uh, she's riding a jaguar or, or a seahorse or some type of mystical being here. So that's, I don't know why, but that just, that is really interesting to me. But it's also like you see how she's speaking and all of this is coming out of her lungs, out of her mouth. And so this is also that energy of speaking our world into being and really being a paying attention to our thoughts as we move forward and to our speech because the things that we're speaking, we are creating realities with our words, our thoughts and our vibration, but very powerfully with our words. So what is it that you're speaking? This is also the energy of conscious breathing. So really utilizing breath work, utilizing breathing and meditation in order to reach these transcendent states of consciousness as well. So a lot of different, um, a lot of different information coming through in that, in that last card there. All right, let's get some Black Moon Astrology cards here. Clear. End of 2021. End of 2021. Releasing our will, releasing the way that we thought things were supposed to go, who we thought we were supposed to be, right? And being open to, to the new information, to the new energies, to what is being revealed, to the new path that is being shown, right? And walking that path without fear being guided by our intuition. Allowing this process of merging our will with the divine will. We're going to be seeing that more and more, I think, too, as we move through 2021. This energy of uh, where we we start seeing our our thoughts our dream, and our dreams really merging with what we can feel the divine's 
the divine's will for us being. Right, where we're coming out of our out of our limited limited humanness and we're we're seeing a much bigger and broader picture and we're really um feeling our connection to that bigger broader picture. We have the fifth house creativity coming out. So a lot of beautiful creative energies that are stirring that are wanting to be expressed. So really expressing that creative side of ourselves. Uh, yeah, with the fire element desire coming out. Yeah, so that fire, that passion, really burning within us and wanting to be expressed. So how is it that we're expressing this? How is it that we're expressing our desires? And we want to be aware as we're moving through the uh, last half of 2021 is, or the end of 2021 here, uh, that we are paying attention to our desires, but we're also not allowing ourselves to get caught up in like hedonistic kind of behaviors, right? With this huge surge of energy and with all of the intensity of everything that's going on, there may for some, and we've probably been noticing this already, that some people are getting pulled into those old storylines, especially when it comes to um, overindulgence, so we want to be wary of that. We want to be wary also of where we're channeling our fire and our passion and that we're channeling it in productive ways, right? And that we're utilizing that life force energy appropriately. But uh, yeah, just a lot of energy of, um, of really cultivating that flame of desire within us, really using that fire, that passionate fire within us in order to create some some um some powerful some powerful things in our, in our outer realities this is also that energy of the performance where are we being the performer and is the performance that we are giving authentic or is it time to take off take off the mask right are we being authentic are we being true and then we have we have the grand cross action coming out here. So this is those powerful catalyzing forces and energies right here. Yeah, really powerful and dynamic energies. Um, really um, moving us forward. If there's anywhere where we are attempting to sort of hold ourselves back, right? That would be the the my will versus thy will. That there, there are going to the events that transpire are really going to. Um, to, to push us forward. I actually want to pull a couple tarot to clarify this Grand Cross card here. Clear. Let's get some uh, clarification on the Grand Cross. And we talk about the Grand Cross in the read in the daily astrology readings or weekly astrological forecast sometimes. This is an incredibly like the most tense aspect you can have in a chart that really there's no way to not move, right? It makes us so uncomfortable that we have to act. And so those are the energies that we're also going to be experiencing as we move through the end of 2021, right? Any, and there is this fire burning within us. There's this fire burning within the world right now. And so uh, it's kind of like, like a pressure cooker when the heat gets turned up. And we talked about a little bit how in 2022, on the 2-2 portal, uh, Pluto will be reaching 27 degrees, which is the, which is where uh, Pluto was during the American Revolution. That was the last time Pluto was at 27 degrees of Capricorn. So the, on the 2-2 portal, 2-2-2022. So that, like, that's powerful stuff, you guys. Yeah, so with the Grand Cross, we got the Tower. All right which is a perfect energy. That is the energy of the Grand Cross, is that tower energy. So these are possibly events, possibly more events that are going to be um, shifting the collective energy, really um, forcing us out of that energy of complacency. Yeah, and the Hierophant. Spiritual, powerful spiritual lessons, powerful spiritual turning points. Um. This is also the Hierophant can represent uh, systems and structures. So we could be seeing more of the breaking down of those systems and structures. Uh, more information or events going on around these, these, uh, these systems that, that really um, kind of 
opens up the collective, wakes up the collective energy, right? All right, and then we have the Seven of Wands and the Seven of Pentacles coming out. So Seven, Seven energy, which is, as we know, highly spiritual energy. And this is the energy of, right? The energy of people on the defensive, the defensive or the offensive, and really taking that step back to look at this energy. Is this the energy that we want to be in? This is the energy where of some people as well, where they feel like they are um, sort of just uh, having to constantly defend themselves. Or people realizing that they have put people in this energy. And really reviewing that, looking back at that, being like, is this the energy we want to continue in as a collective? Noticing where it is that this energy has possibly been orchestrated as well, right? Um, possibly some, some events um, happening. A culmination of this energy, maybe. That really um, causes people to have to step back and review whether that's the energy we want to move forward in. Right? That's that divisive energy. That energy of polarization. Yeah, this is also where I'm seeing major institutions, um, major shifts around the energy of major institutions. Something, something occurring, whether it's information coming out, whether it's an event that happens that really um, um, brings things to light, brings things into perspective. And possibly uh, causes people to ask that question, like, what it, what are we really fighting for? Yeah, then we have the Six of Cups with the Two of Pentacles. So this is that energy of balance, right? This is um, a reconciliation energy, possibly. Choices. Can we come together? Can we unify opposites? There's a big energy of giving and generosity that I'm feeling with this card right now. It's like you see all these turbulent waves and waters in the background. It's like the energy of trying to balance all of that. And really coming together in order to keep the ship afloat. Any more energy here? Yeah. So people who've had very rigid opinions or people who felt like they were... um. They were just at odds with other people, really reviewing, re just reviewing that energy, looking back over that energy, seeing the things, the illusion, right? The illusion, the things, the things that were hidden. Some people, it's like, I almost feel like coming to this realization that like uh, this whole time they were fighting other people, it was actually fighting themselves. Or realizing that they were they were on the wrong side of an argument or, or a battle. Yeah. And then we got the Eight of Cups. Walking away. Five of Cups. Yes, there's an energy of loss here, but there's also an energy of not seeing what you've gained. 
right? Not seeing what what you what you've gained. So it's walking away from this energy of defeat. Possibly even feeling defeated. But then realizing that in the walking away, in the giving up, in the letting go of what it is that we were holding on to, we actually receive everything we ever wanted. Things we didn't even know we wanted. So there's this incredible victory in defeat. Or in surrender, rather. And then it's that shift in perspective that allows us to see the real gift in letting go. Yeah. Interesting. Any Anything else here? Two of Cups. So we got this beautiful soulmate energy coming in. We also got the devil on the bottom of the deck. So, um, so we got judgment. And now the three of swords. All right. So this is a lot of um, judgment calls when it comes to relationship and partnership as well. Right? Being called to action around this. Um, really um, make it or break it time for relationships and connections, I feel like. But as we are releasing the old toxic connections or the connections that aren't working, uh, we are opening ourselves up to calling in those who are truly meant for us in this next, our students shouldn't say truly, everyone is for the time that they are. But in this next phase, we got this five of pentacles energy here. That's the energy of being alone. That's the energy of feeling left out, right? Stuck in our heads. Something hidden that wasn't that wasn't meant to be known or understood. And whatever it was that we couldn't see caused us to keep holding on. That's why the ending had to come about. As abrupt as it might have seemed for some people, for others it was kind of an ending that was dragged out, right? So it's all about realizations, a lot of realizations at the, over this next couple months that really transform our perspectives, our way of seeing the world, our way of seeing each other, and really moves us to these calmer, clearer waters. Individually and um, to some extent, possibly collectively as well. But we got this devil energy that keeps popping up on the bottom of the deck. All right, so th these are the energies that we're working with. These are the energies that we're working through. These energies of control, these energies of entrapment, of anything that keeps us bound, that keeps us enslaved, right? How are we playing our, a role in that process? That's something in our own enslavement, right? That's something that's coming to the forefront here that people are going to um, be asked to look at in whatever way this, this manifests in their own individual lives. Yeah. It's like a lot of, there's, there's going to be places where we haven't even realized that we were holding on to things that were keeping us stuck. We didn't even know. We couldn't see, right? And now we have that vision. As some of those things get removed or our perspective alone allows them to transform and we're able to finally let go of the things we didn't even know we were holding on to. Yeah, coming into this beautiful, empowered energy. All right, anything else from the Black Moon Astrology cards here? Okay. Oh, damn. Damn. All right, so we got Saturn return and the Saturn card coming out. And the Saturn card is all about truth. The Saturn return card is all about maturity. So yeah, this is like major truths being unveiled, being revealed, both in our, our personal lives and possibly in the world, right? That really um, bring us into, force us, step us into a deeper level of maturity. Right? Saturn turning direct, 
really exposing truth now where truth needs to be exposed. And that truth causes us individually and collectively, like we said, to have to step up into a deeper level of maturity, a deeper level of responsibility. And we have the third house messages on the bottom of the deck. So that definitely makes it feel like communication, truthful communication coming in. And we know that there is so much untruthful communication, right, that we're being fed all the time. And so it'll be interesting to see uh, the avenues that this truthful communication takes. So we have first house, the body coming out. Interesting. Tell me more about this first house card. And the south node, life's debts. Interesting. Let's get some clarification on this. Actually, what I want to do is, yeah, we'll use the Thoth Tarot. Let's get some clarification on the, the first house, clear, and the south node. First house represents many things, right? Represents an aspect of our identity, how we show ourselves to the world, how we see and perceive the world. It also does represent, um, can represent the body, right? The physical appearance. This is with the south node, this is like old energies, karmic energies. Uh, possibly karmic energies clearing from the body. This is also those old, outdated ways of seeing ourselves and the world. This is also the ways that we display ourselves to others, right? All right, let's get some clarification on this energy here. All right, got the five of pentacles worry coming out. And then we have the Empress coming out. Interesting. So it's this energy of um, transforming lack into abundance is what it feels like to me. Transforming lack into abundance. There are these energies, right, where we saw and perceived ourselves as lacking in some sense of the word. Where we see ourselves as we saw ourselves as less than, and now we're beginning to see ourselves more in the fullness of who we are. We're beginning to really have this 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 understanding of our worth that's allowing us to really move forward and um, know that we're worthy of abundance. Know that we're worthy of all the good things, right? All the good things in in life. And really stepping forward and claiming that. Yeah. Anything else on this energy here? That was interesting how that sort of fell out. Prince of Swords. Yeah, this is getting more information, right? Coming to a deeper understanding, more knowledge coming through. And a lot of this stuff has to do like with the South Node energy, right? Past life energies, like we said, past life perceptions of ourselves in the world. Hidden anxieties. Anything else with this energy here? We have, woo, yeah, another five here. But remember, fives are about change. And this one is the five of swords. Defeat. Give me some more about that. Queen of Discs, which would be the Queen of Pentacles. And then we have two threes coming out here. But there's sorrow and abundance. We got the three of swords and the three of cups. Which is really interesting. Or the four of cups, rather. No, three of cups. 
So this is, this is really, once again, it's just that energy of moving into our Queen of Pentacles, right? Um, it's like all of this heavy energy, right? This heavy energy that could have broken us, but instead made us stronger. It's like seeing all of, um, all of these, it's the transforming of these lower energies into this higher energy. It's the defeats, what we consider defeats, right? Remember, we don't, we don't use that terminology. We don't use the term failure because there is no failing, right? There is no fail. And yet, um, these perceived failures, these, these situations where we felt defeated, where we felt this pain, we felt this sorrow, really were paving the way to something greater, right? There was a gift in there. It's being able to recognize those gifts and being able to really marshal the strength. There's a lot of energy of us growing in terms of our strength. Seeing the value, seeing the value in ourselves, seeing the value in our experiences and how that leads to abundance. And we have the Ten of Cups on the bottom of the deck, satiety. Seen through the illusion of defeat. Yeah. We have the universe, which is the world. So ending those old cycles, those old cycles of defeat, those old cycles of sorrow and worry, those old cycles of not seeing and understanding our strength or our worth, those old cycles of feeling like a victim, right? That's what this queen of pentacles with the defeat and the sorrow, it's like overcoming the victim mentality and seeing yourself as thriving, seeing yourself as powerful, Seeing yourself as abundant, right, of the part of knowing and understanding that you have the power to shape your reality and then doing so. Releasing all of those old energies that kept you stuck in these old paradigms, right, that taught you that you were a victim, that taught you that you were, you were worthless, that taught you that failure was a thing. That kept you, you um, trapped in this energy of worry and self-doubt. It's moving out of those energies. Or being given the opportunity to move out of those energies. Possibly by having those energies um, brought to the surface. Right? Because that's how, that's a lot of times how we transform them. And not allowing that energy to bog us down anymore. Right? Rising above it. And then this is like the, um, the pinnacle of that energy with the universe. Anything else here? We have the three of cups on the bottom of the traditional tarot too. So a lot of that energy of celebration coming in. And the fool. A new start. A new chapter. As we move into 2022. Two. Two of pentacles again and in this deck it's change. Yeah, like we said, lots of powerful changes. And then we have the devil in reverse underneath that, which we like. Yeah, lots of powerful changes. Wealth, abundance, right? Coming in as we shed all of these old storylines. Yeah, the Ten of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles, all right? Abundance, abundance, abundance. That is, right? That is your birthright. That is what you are when you release all of these old, all this old programming, all of these, these shadow energies, these constricting energies, these victim mentalities. It's like there may be information, there may be truth coming out that's going to cause some people to want to fall into that victim mentality, but we're being called to rise above that. Right? To know we're only a victim if we allow ourselves to be. That's a choice. All right. What else? We're going to close with a Beyond Lemuria card here. 
She of the Lotus popping out. We'll see if that comes back out, though. All right. Guidance from Beyond Lemuria. Closing guidance as we move through this end of 2021. And so it's going to be different for different people, right? We're getting the opportunity to transform those energies. Some will, some won't. Just like anything else. But more and more people are being given that opportunity. More and more truth is being revealed. But we all get to choose, right? We get to choose what we want to see. If we want to see. So we have luminescence and loving compassion coming out. So there's a beautiful heart chakra energy there, right? A really beautiful um, possibility to tap into that heart frequency. That frequency of love, that frequency of compassion. And utilize that energy, right? Let's see here. It's all about self-love, heart-centered living, light shining in darkness, accepting your shadows as the flip side of your strengths, a vulnerable, wide open heart, okay? When we choose to journey through life from our hearts, it illuminates the dark darkness. All illusion drops away and we see what is real. What does self-love look like for you? Self-love is often talked about, but we don't always consider its deeper implications. One of the keys for bringing heaven to earth is the realization that our of our optimal reality. To create a new earth not dissimilar to the Lemurian utopia, we navigate or illuminate our, the journey of our hearts. When our core foundations are integrity and kindness, our choices are ethical and our souls radiate warmth, hold compassionate space for others, and inspire others to carry it forward. Unfortunately, as we travel through life, we often armor ourselves to protect our hearts. We fear them to be delicate and vulnerable, but this is contrary to the incredible power of having a fully open heart. Sadly, we can toss parts of ourselves in the trash because we cannot see how they serve us, or they may feel too ugly or painful. Loving yourself is about accepting all of yourself, including the parts you may consider less desirable. Self-love is unconditional. As we make the journey to wholeness, we see that the parts we have severed from ourselves are counterparts to our greatest strengths. We also realize the actions we thought benefited others when we went out of our way to please fell short or fall away. In their place, we can allow authentic gifts to unfurl and bring luminosity to shared endeavors and environments. Consider how you relate to the world when you come to it from a happy place of fullness, doing things because you want to. Sometimes we feel we must give away our happiness to show we care for others, but when we live our joy, it affects others. Acting from uninspired obligation and the cloud it brings can hold no light to that joy. Remember, your internal world reflects your outer reality. If you are met by less than ideal dynamics, they may hold a clue to your unloved parts. Accepting our less desirable aspects doesn't make the behaviors that may arise from them okay. Accepting your whole self means being okay with the foundations that created these insecurities and bringing them back into balance. A technique for painting light involves balancing the surroundings with a darker color. The darker the juxtaposition, the brighter the light appears. This is a great analogy for accepting all aspects of our deeper selves. Be real with your shadows so you can shine more light. You can let more light in and shine brighter. Love is the most potent and healing tool we have, and the more we feel, the more we create. It's contagious, too. The more we live from our hearts, the more we find it in our lives. So how do we kickstart this wholeness of being? Be present and authentic with your heartfelt needs. Have an awareness and a softening towards your unloved parts. It may seem easier said than done, but start seeing things from a gentler, more compassionate place, away from judgment. In the bigger picture, we are all doing the best we can within our circumstances, and it's really important that we remember and acknowledge that for everyone. That doesn't mean that we allow behavior that is harming to us, but it does mean that we accept people where they're at and have loving compassion. Often the things that keep us out of our hearts are much simpler than we re to realize than we under to release than we realize. There we go. Finding what makes us happy and surrounding ourselves with those who really see us and encourage us goes a long way. Be aware of the parts of yourself that you find easy to love and set goals for healing themes that require extra care and attention. Honor the fantastic vessel your body is. Look at what you are good at and grow your self-appreciation from this place. Wonder at the challenges you have moved through. 
Dream big, but also be real about what is achievable. Do not compare yourself to others as we all have our different struggles and strikes. Think about all you are grateful for. Acts of kindness are another way to expand that heartfelt feel-good vibe. Yeah, and so uh, this is all about self-love. This is about embracing the shadow, right? And this is really powerful, having that loving compassion, not just for others, but for the self. And this is so important as we move into 2022. Um, I can't remember if I talked about it at the beginning of this video, but it's all about that Taurus energy, that Taurus Scorpio axis. So this is about the shadow. This is about merging and accepting the shadow, self-love, self-value. All right. So we're really uh, getting a kickstart on these energies right now that are going to be so importantly powerful and prevalent as we move into 2022. And isn't it interesting that we have card number 22 on the bottom of the deck, the crystal keys, which is all about wisdom codes, potent information, awareness of drama, creating patterns and healing through awareness. So all that energy of awareness, um, all personal power struggles and ego problems affect the bigger picture of how the world operates. Our shadows are unresolved wisdom codes. So once again, talking about that shadow energy. Avoidance makes them spiral out to aid in the construction of a world we don't actually want, both individually and collectively. When we see this information as the gift that it is, we can cultivate presence and begin to see between the lines of our inner workings. The world needs as much light as possible so we do not have a repeat of what happened in Lemuria or Atlantis, right? We allow ourselves to see our shadows as an opportunity to bring more light into our being and heal the world from these dark foundations. So this is about finding the wisdom hidden in what triggers us, right? When we are being triggered, there is something within us that is crying out for healing. And we are going to experience through the end of 2022, or 21 rather, um, these experiences that do, that do uh, trigger us in order to bring forth the healing that is necessary for us at this time, the shadow work that's necessary to be done so that we can come into this more loving place within ourselves. All right, I love you guys. That was a powerful reading. Lots of intense energies as we move forward uh, through this end of 2021, but we are here for it. We are each so strong, so powerful. Each of us is a leader, right? We are the way showers. And so we walk this path with our heads held high, right? We embrace the change. We embrace the truths that are revealed. We embrace the opportunities for more healing, Right, And this is how we share. This is how we show others the way forward. We don't fear our own darkness. We don't fear any darkness, right? We shine our beautiful light upon that darkness and we welcome it home. All right, I love you guys. I appreciate you so much. If you enjoyed this reading, hit that like button. Drop a comment down below. Let me know um, how you're feeling about these energies that we're moving through as we wrap up 2021. Uh, there are links down below to donate if you feel so moved to donate to this channel. Um... There, uh, my information is in the description box below. As you guys, if you guys want to reach out for a personal reading, uh, personal healing, any of the different stuff that I do, uh, it's all gone over there. It is my honor and my privilege to be able to work with you guys one on one in that capacity. I love you. I appreciate you, each and every single one of you, so very, very, very much. And I hope that you have a beautiful day whenever it is that you are viewing this video. Much love.